we're closer to the end of Paraklamites. On the top, it's 106. At the bottom, it's 196. And the last thing we were learning, we're going to start from. Um, okay, we're going to start eight lines on the top of 106 on top, 196 at the bottom. Okay, now Trebo is explaining the last thing we were learning is why you need the kavan of the mitzvah. So he says like this, certain mitzvahs, if you have uh, instinctive, natural, it goes up to the world of Yitzira. If you have the meditated level of love and fear, then it goes even higher. What happens if somebody just does it, as like he says, as habit? It's just habit. He said, then it doesn't go up higher than a seer. Okay? Because there's no wings. There's no enthusiasm. There's no fervor. There's no uh, wings, so to speak, love and fear that would carry it upward. So he says like this. Um, okay, we're going to start this part. We learned to, we're going to go a little bit quicker. Eight lines in the top. I want to mention one more thing to understand what we're learning here. There is Lishma, meaning learning something because God said so. That's Lishma. Now you could do Shalai Lishma, not for this purpose because Hashem said so. But there's two types of Shalai Lishma. I mean, there's millions, but generally speaking, there's two types of Shalai Lishma, not for the sake of God. One way is you do it as a habit. I mean, uh, I'm doing it because, uh, like, I get dressed in the morning, I put on spilling. So that's Shalai Lishma. I'm not doing it because I want to bind myself to Hashem because I understand I have a Neshama and I want to connect to Hashem. I, you know, I'm doing it because of habit. Then there's a worse level of Shalai Lishma. I'm doing mitzvahs from personal gratification, meaning I'm learning Taira that everybody should respect me and think I'm brilliant. I'm doing mitzvahs because everybody should respect me. I'm giving tzedakah because everybody is going to expect, you know, respect me. That's also shalai lishma, but that's even worse, as we'll soon learn, than the first level of shalai lishma means I'm doing out of habit. I'm doing out of habit is bad enough that I'm not doing it for the sake of Hashem. But when I use mitzvahs for my personal gain, that's already pretty negative. I'm using godliness for my personal benefit. It's bad enough you're not doing it because Hashem said so. It's bad enough you're not doing it because they, that's my habit, they, you know, whatever. When you do it, that's even worse. And now Trevor is going to talk about this now. He doesn't What happens to the guy is not doing it because of a personal gratification. Allah Kamesha Kosei, the Pasik says, Tia Yuraisim Aisi, people should, the fear of God should be upon you. Mitzvah Anoshim Lumada, meaning habitual, it's a habit. Pirish Machma Saregel, because of Hergolami, because of habit. Shahorgul Mikat Nusai, that the person was just trained from the time he was young. Shaher Giloi, they accustomed him, the Limdai Ave Virabai. And his father or his teacher taught him later Sashemula of the so just the fear of God, but he doesn't have any feeling in it. There's no feeling in it whatsoever. He doesn't do it because Hashem said so. And Al Trebi says like this Lishma Mamish, to do it Mamish because Hashem wants us to, it's impossible to do. Without the natural instinctive love, remember, not the, the meditated love and fear. The, the love and fear of the natural neshama, we have a natural love and fear of Hashem just because we're Jewish. That level, without that level even, you can never awaken doing it lishma because Hashem wants. If you don't awaken a love and a fear of Hashem and an awe of Hashem, 
then whatever you're doing has nothing to do with Hashem. It doesn't. In order to serve Hashem because Hashem wants it, we need at least minimal the natural instinct of love. Let it see in the to the life to reveal this hidden love that we possess in the concealment of the heart. Elad gilui to reveal the mer v'talumisli ve'akupan into the mind and the concealed parts of the heart. He says why? He kameishin adam eisa dava b'shvul chaveri. A person will not do a favor for his friend. Lemalus v'tzayne to do what your friend wants. Elam kein erve ayari mimeni. Unless you like him to a certain extent, or you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be your best friend. But if you're going to do something for somebody, you're going to only do it if you like the guy or fear the guy or, or respect the person. If you don't love the guy, you don't respect him, you're not going to do it. Why? Because why should I? I don't have, I have nothing to do with you. I don't love you. I don't fear you. Nothing. He says, it's impossible to do a mitzvah because Hashem wants it. But am is truthfully. We do it because this is what Hashem wants. Believes he caught in without remembering. This is We must awaken a natural, some type of love and fear of Hashem. Okay, meaning like this. Lishma means not the highest level lishma. There's infinitely greater levels of lishma. Dr. is talking very practical, basic level of lishma means we do it because Hashem said so. Hashem wants us to do it. Okay, Hashem wants us to do it. I have an instinctive, natural love and fear of Hashem or of Hashem. So I'm going to do the mitzvah because Hashem wants me to do it. If you don't have that, you're not going to do the mitzvah. If it's just habit, okay, I have no feeling in any, it is not even a slightest feeling for Hashem, why should I do it? So therefore, the Alter is saying, if you're doing a mitzvah out of habit, then you're not doing it because you love and fear Hashem. You're doing it again because this is what I was trained to do. You're not doing it out of the a feeling that you feel I, I want to be close to Hashem. You need even the natural minimal, the natural instinct of love of Hashem. They say, I love Hashem, and He wants me to do it. Therefore, I want I want Him to do it because I love Him. I fear Him. I have all respect for Hashem. And then he says like this: Vagam Ava Levada, even just love alone, ain't a nikrish b'shem avida. Is not called proper serving Hashem, at least with the lower level of fear, which is again, which is again also concealed. Every Jew has natural, inborn instinctive love and fear of Hashem. It's not necessarily blown up like a meditative type of love and fear. He says, like this a person, if you want to connect to Hashem, there's two ways. There's loving Hashem and fearing of Hashem. And like we discussed already many times in these trakim, these are the two wings that make the mitzvah fly upward. Now, you, a bird cannot fly or a plane cannot fly with one wing. You must have both wings to fly up. Without love, without fear, or for that matter, fear without love is not Aveda. Again, what does Aveda mean? It's translated as work. It's translated as worship. That's not what it means. Aveda means two things. Number one, you're an Eved. Aveda is, comes with Eved, a slave, which the essence of a slave is completely nullified and subjugated to the master. That's the definition of a slave. If he's not subjugated to the master, he's not a slave. A slave by definition means he's subjugated to the slave. 
But there's another definition of Evet. We learned many times, there's one of the Lamitas Malachas, one of the 39 major Malachas and Chavis, is what's called Ma'abed. Ma'abed means tanning the hide. Tanning. What does tanning mean? You take an animal, you shacht it, or you kill it, whatever. And then you take off the skin. The skin is coarse, thick, useless. Okay? If you want to use that hide of the animal, whether you want to make leather garments or shoes, or you want to make parchment, okay, you have to refine that hide. Even in Aloha, the, the Rama talks about this, about Sebi Tarek, the hide itself is divided into two. There's the side facing the inside the animal, the side facing the outside of the animal. One you put on safe potato with, one you write that the parchment of the safe potato is from one, fill in the from another, whatever. But you'll have ma'abid means, evid means I'm working on myself to refine myself. I want to become better. I want to become closer to Hashem. I don't want to be an animalistic human. I want to be a human that goes closer to Hashem. That can only come about with love and fear because each one has its advantage. Like we say in davening many times, Avinu Malkeinu. Avinu means he's our father. Malkeinu means he's our king. Now, father and king are contradictory terms because you can't be a king over your own children. The definition of a king According to Taylor, the definition, not a dictator, the definition of a king is, like we say in Davin, Hashem's sovereignty is kingdom, the Jews accepted willingly. The definition of a king is two opposite things foreigners who subjugate themselves to the king. There's two opposite things. A child cannot become subjugated to the father because the child is the extension of the father. In halacha, the child is in the place of the father. A king, by definition, is you have to accept his sovereignty. It can't be you. A child is you. So malkeinu means, what is the definition of Eved, basically? He's a separate entity that subjugates himself to the king. That's the level of yira, fear and awe. Avinu is ahavo, love. Avinu malkeinu, the uniqueness of a Jew is we have both levels. We have avinu and we have malkeinu. We're both. From one side, where Hashem's children, and also the other aspect of it is, we are got Hashem's subjects, which basically is in essence, Ava and Yira, love and fear, father and king. So the Rebbe is saying, the Avaida of an Evid, the Avaida, the service of Hashem, which we want to become refined, can only be when I have within me present, this understanding, at least, the, at least the natural instinct of love and fear, that I'm doing this because I love Hashem and I fear Hashem, I want to be one with Hashem. If you're doing it without thinking about God at all, you're doing it because, you know, this is what you're taught to do, so you do it. Why? I don't know. Did I just do it? Then he says, you can't become connected to Hashem. You're not going to become connected to Hashem. And he says, and that's if you do it just as a habit. Now he says, what happens if it's even a lower level? You do it for personal gratification. That's even worse. Because now you take God and use it for yourself. What happens when a person occupies himself? Not for his own sake. Meaning, not for, meaning not for Hashem. 
He does it for personal gratification, like the Kavit Atzmei for his own glory, like to be a Tamil Chacham or Chai Gavim. So now you're even doing it worse. Now, it's not only neutral that you're not connecting to Hashem, you're doing it as habit, okay? Grant, I'm not connecting to Hashem. But I'm not going against Hashem. I'm doing it because I'm doing it. When a person takes godliness and wants to use it for their personal gratification, then you're schlepping God into evil. Then you're dragging godliness into evil. And that's a no-no. And he says like this. As I then, that personal gratification, which comes in Kripas Naida to do Torah Mitzvahs, then the Torah that you learn or the mitzvahs that you do are in Klippa Lefisha. They go down into Sholosh Klippa Satmeus. They go down into total evil. Ad Ashayasa Chuva until he'll do Chuva. Which brings healing to the world. Meaning, how? Shebeshuva yel Hashem. Because then when you do tshuva, you're taking godliness out of evil. Gam terose shove imen. His tato will also go out of klipa. So again, Al-Tareb is saying like this. The job of a Jew is to tell the mitzvahs. And therefore, Al-Tareb is explaining this parak. What he started was why you need kavana. Even though the main purpose of a mitzvah is the action of the mitzvah like we Nevertheless, without the intent, at least natural instinctive intent, how much more so with the meditated intent, then you elevate the mitzvah, you become connected to Hashem. That's called the Shema. You're doing it because Hashem says so. If you're doing it out of habit, there's no godliness involved, you're not going anywhere. But then there's a level that the Rebbe says that you even lower it into total evil. But it says like this. So, so is it better not to do that? He says like this. No. The Gemara tells us a person should occupy him. The Gemara says you should occupy yourself for the wrong reasons. Why? Because from the motives of self interest, you'll eventually come to do it right. And then, as he's going to explain, you're going to, in other words, like this, if you learn Torah for the wrong reason, the Mishnah says you should do it. The Gemara says you should learn Torah for the wrong reasons. I, the question is, you're lowering it into total evil. You're dragging Hashem's Torah into my personal, I'm dragging it into total evil. But the Gemara says, because eventually every person because eventually you're going to learn it over for the right reason. And then when you learn it for the right cause, you will re-elevate all the Torah that you lowered into evil. And he says, there's no question that every Jew is going to do tshuva. He said, well, the Gilgalzel the Gilgalacher. Either this reincarnation or the next reincarnation. Because the Pasik says, no, nobody is rejected by Hashem. So, therefore, even if you learn for the wrong purposes, it's fine. I am now lowering it into evil. The Torah promises, no person is rejected by Hashem. Eventually, you're going to do tshuva. And when you do tshuva, all of it is going to be re-elevated back to Kedusha, back to Lishma. But when you do it, like you said, habit. Not the uh, Lishma, but Lishma. You don't do it the right reasons. You don't do it for the negative reasons either. You just do it because you do it. Ain't a David Tali but Chuba. Then you don't need Chuba. What is the guy in the guy said Chuba that the Rebbe explains? What is Chuba? Chuba means returning Hashem out of Golos and ourselves out of Golos. 
right? When a Jew sins, the Holy Ghost of Tshuva, the 12th program of the Ghost of Tshuva, I mean, basically, Dr. Rebbe explains what happened when the Jew sins. When the Jew sins, we're connected to Hashem. We're a rope that connects us to Hashem. You go down, you drag the whole rope with you and everything on top. Everything. Hashem becomes dragged into, into garbage, into evil, into mud. Okay? So what does Tshuva mean? Returning. Or returning Returning on Neshama, or returning Hashem out of Gullus. That that's what we do when the person does tshuva. So he says, when a person learns tshuva for the negative reasons, not parts, no reason, not good, not bad. When you learn it, not good, not bad, you didn't drag godliness into evil. You just didn't connect. So then you don't need to do tshuva. And he says. If you're learning neutral, not good, not bad. Learning because your parents make you go to yeshiva. Okay, so you're learning. So you're not learning for the wrong reasons. You're just not learning for the right reasons. So then he says, you don't need tshuva. As soon as you relearn this properly, then what you learn for no reason, neutral, becomes connected and combined to, and combines to this and flies upward. So that's another thing, a remarkable thing, if you think about it. A guy that learns straight up <laughs> for the wrong reasons, the negative reasons is worse than a guy that learns Torah for no reason. Temporarily. He says like this. In order to come to Lishma, to connect, you have to have either the minimal instinctive love or the massive love. Either. You learn it neutral because of habit. I was taught, taught like this. This is what I was taught. This is what I do. It doesn't go up but it doesn't go down. Therefore, as soon as you learn what you learn uh, status quo, you know, not good, not bad. You learn it once properly, the, the neutral learning that you didn't do good or bad becomes elevated with the new learning that you learned the Shema and it becomes elevated. But, he says, why could it be you didn't put it into Klippa yet. You didn't put it into Klippa. You didn't do it negatively. You just didn't do it for the right reasons. But he says, um, therefore, the person should always occupy himself for the wrong reasons. Why? Because eventually it's going to come. It's going to come to the right reasons. And Dr. Rebbe says the same thing with Tefillah B'lei Kavana, like the Zaire says. The Zaire says, you know, it's funny, a lot of times it happens to all of us. We remember, what, when, did I daven yet? I don't remember if I daven. You know, if a person would have a lot of Kavana when they're davening, they're not going to read the doubt if they davened or not. They're going to know if they did or not. Okay, sometimes we, shoot, you know, just dabbing. Like, you know, when you start driving a car, you know, you're very aware of what you're doing. Afterwards, it, it comes uh, subconsciously. You're driving a car, you don't even know what you're doing. It just happens naturally. The same thing can happen with davening and learning. You don't remember, did I daven or not? But you didn't do it negative. You didn't do it on davening that everybody should see how great I'm davening. You know, and they're going to they're going to give me honor and glory. That is Al Rebbe says is active negativity, and therefore you bring an empiric man. I don't know if we're going to start to say maybe a few lines. Al Rebbe is going to say until you do tshuva, that learning is an evil. That learning and davening is an evil. But desire says Al Rebbe finishes the parak. It says the same thing with tefillah without intent. If you just say to uh, obviously we learned the first the Pasik Rishma Yisro, you have to have intent. The first 
ברוכה of שמונה of the Amidi of seven temples. But we're not talking about those things. That's halachically mandated. But the rest of davening, if you don't have any kavan, okay, the Zayir says eventually you're going to daven one time with kavan. At one time, one time is going to elevate all the davenings that you davened incorrectly. One learning properly lishma will re elevate shuva all the learning that you lowered into evil. If a person didn't do it for negativity, they just did it because, you know, that's their habit, as soon they don't need to do tshuva because they don't need to return Hashem from negativity, from klipa, from evil, because you didn't lower Hashem into evil. And therefore you don't have to. But now that Rebbe will just start to perfume his parak man. Okay? But what happens as long as you didn't learn properly to do tshuva? And your learning doesn't even go up to the tenth spheres of Asiya, the lowest world, and Yitzira. It doesn't even go any. It doesn't go to any spiritual realm. Why? He says like this. Okay, this is gonna. We'll just start with it. He has spheres, this ten spheres, and the chinus elokus. If you remember last time or two times ago, we're explaining their worlds, the four worlds. Now, the worlds have chambers. When we talk about the malachim, and you have the ten spheres, the ten godly levels. Then you have a world. The world is a world. There's chambers, there's dwellings. Then you have the 10 attributes of God that is in each world. Like the world of Asiya. It's a very low world, very limited godliness. But you have a world, and then you have the godliness of the world. What is that? The 10 spheres of Asiya. Yitzira is a more refined world. But then you have a whole world. Then you have the, the 10 levels of godliness in the world. So you, we can't. We have to keep one thing in mind. When we speak about Atsilas, there's two aspects of Atsilas, or Bria, or Yitzira, or Asiya. Any of the four spiritual worlds. We speak about Bria. It doesn't only mean the ten attributes of God in Bria. It refers to where Malachim live, the chambers, the spiritual chambers of Malachim, of certain Nishamas. You know, Yitzira is a world. In the world, there's godliness. Now, the Rebbe is saying over here that if somebody da davens and learns for the wrong reason, the, the davening, because you lowered it into evil, until you do tshuva. Once you do tshuva, it all goes back up. But when you didn't do tshuva yet, it doesn't even go up to the ten spheres of Asiya or Yitzira even. It doesn't go anywhere in Kedusha. It goes into the world of Asiya, maybe. It goes into the chambers of Yitzira. But it doesn't go anywhere of Kedusha, of holiness. Because there was no holiness in it. Not only was there no holiness in it, you took, you embarrassed godliness by utilizing Hashem for my personal gratification. That's chutzpah. You know, you don't want to do it. But to use godliness for my personal gratification, that is chutzpah. And that is actively lowering God into evil. And therefore, the, you learn Torah, but there's no Kedusha in it. You daven, there's no Kedusha because it's all negative. If you do it neutral, not good, not bad, it goes up into Kedusha. But because it doesn't go into Klippa, here, when it goes into Klippa, it doesn't even go anywhere. It doesn't, doesn't go into the ten spheres because spheres means the godliness of the world. Godliness is only a vessel for godliness. For negativity, evil, personal gain, godliness. And therefore, that's forbidden. Okay.
that's it for tonight. The Mitzvah Shem Monday night. Uh, we'll have Parsha Wednesday. Next Wednesday night, we're going to learn the Lord, Lord of Purim and Chassidic says to Purim. Again, two weeks from tonight, we're going to start uh, the, the Pesach classes.